Hi, my name is Beth Massey, and today I'm going to show you how to deploy your LightSwitch application to Windows Azure. LightSwitch is a new development tool for building business applications for the desktop and the cloud. LightSwitch makes it easy to create data-centric, rich internet applications. I already have an application open that we've been building in this video series. It's a simple order management system that allows us to work with customers and their orders. Now I want to deploy this application so that other people can start using it. In the last video, I went over the deployment options we have and showed you how to deploy a two-tier and a three-tier application onto machines that are living on-site. In this video, I'd like to walk through how we can deploy this same application into Windows Azure. The first thing you're going to need to do is to sign up for a Windows Azure account. So head on over to www.azure.com and you can sign up for a free trial. I've already signed up, so I already have a subscription that I manage through the management portal. So when you first get an Azure subscription, you need to set up a couple things before you can start publishing your app from LightSwitch. So we need to create a new hosted service, so go ahead and click on this button here. And this is going to be the actual website that will be hosting your LightSwitch application. So we'll just enter a service name, and I'll call this LightSwitch Order Management System, and then specify the URL prefix for the service. This ends up becoming the URL that you use to access the app. Okay, then uh, choose a region. I'll choose anywhere US. And then click Do Not Deploy, because we're going to deploy this from LightSwitch itself. And then click OK. Okay, so this is going to create our hosted service. And once it's ready to go, um, you'll see that here in the management portal. Okay, next we're going to need a storage account. The storage account is used to store your LightSwitch application as it's being uploaded into Windows Azure. So go ahead and select storage accounts and select new storage account. And we're going to need to use um, letters and numbers for this one. And then we'll just choose a region and I'll select anywhere US again. Click OK. Okay, next we're going to need to set up a database server instance to store our data. Okay, you'll only need to do this once per subscription because you can store multiple databases in one instance. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up a database. So what you can do is you, you can click this button right here, create a new SQL server. Okay, and I'm just going to, I have this only this one subscription. Okay, and we're going to select a region. I'm going to do North Central this time. And now you'll need to specify an administrator login and password. Okay, click Next. Okay, now we'll need to basically select Allow Other Windows Azure Services to access this server, because we'll need to basically allow our application to um, access this database. Okay, and then we're also going to need to add another um, another firewall rule. Okay, so this rule basically is going to allow um, my machine to access the uh, the server. Okay, so that we can publish directly from LightSwitch. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and enter my IP my IP address here. Okay, you can definitely su support a range here. So I'm just going to call this Beth's computer. Okay, and click OK. All right, and then finish. Okay, and now what we got is we'll see a database instance here that's created. Okay, and when we look on the uh, properties here, let me just get this over here, and we look at the properties, we'll see that here is the name of our database. Okay, and so we're going to need to supply that in the um, published wizard in Light Switch when we get back over there. You're also going to need the subscription ID. Okay. All right, cool. So let's head over to Light Switch. Okay, back here in our order management application, if we look at the project properties, you'll notice that I'm using forms authentication here for our access control. Okay, you can keep in mind that when you're deploying to Azure, you cannot use Windows authentication. You're going to need to use forms or uh, no authentication at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and publish this. Um, we can do this in a couple different ways. You can right click on the um, application and click publish from the Solution Explorer, or you can go down to the application type and then you can click publish. Okay, so 
the first thing I'm going to do is for this is we're going to decide whether or not we want desktop or web application. Now you can you can host either one in Azure, but keep in mind when you select desktop, then later when it asks for a certificate, you'll need to provide one from a trusted certificate authority like VeriSign. So for this video, I'm going to use a test certificate. So I'll just choose web. OK, so next uh, we'll just choose Windows Azure for hosting uh, the application services, OK, and click Next. So now we're going to need to specify our subscription ID, so I'm going to paste that in here. And the next thing we'll need to do is specify a management certificate. So the management certificate is used to authorize your computer to update the hosted services on Windows Azure. So I'll just go ahead and create a uh, new self-signed certificate here. Okay, and then we'll click copy path because what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go upload this certificate over back into the management portal for Windows Azure. Okay, so let's go ahead back into our portal and then what we'll do is go back over to our hosted services and then you'll see um, what we'll need is a uh, management certificates node and then add the certificate and here's where we why we copied the path. We'll just paste that right there, click open and then click OK. OK, so let's go back to the Publish Wizard here and uh, click Next. OK, so uh, this is the Azure service configuration. In this step, we'll need to specify the hosted service, the storage account, and the environment information for the deployment that we entered into the management portal. So we should see all this stuff in the drop downs here. OK, so there's our service. There's our storage. And you can select whether or not you want to go to staging or production. I'm going to just go ahead and leave the production. Go ahead and click Next. OK, so here's where we uh, specify our security settings. When deploying to Azure, LightSwitch requires an HTTPS uh, for secure connections to your application. So this requires an SSL certificate. Um, the drop down here will list all the SSL certificates that are already uploaded into Azure. So LightSwitch allows you to upload an existing SSL certificate right through here. And now ideally this will be from a certificate authority such as VeriSign. Uh, but in this video I'm just going to use a self-signed certificate which I can do because I selected a web application. Um, keep in mind if you're doing a desktop application you will need to specify a real certificate. Okay, so I'm just going to create one real quick. OK, so this will pop this into Windows Azure for us. Now, keep in mind that because we're using a self-signed certificate, that when uh, we run the app through the browser, the published app will result in warnings. OK, so go ahead and click Next. All right, so next we need to specify the database connection. We need to specify two connections. One is for the administrator and one is for the user. The administrator connection will only be used by this published wizard to create or update the database itself. The user connection string, on the other hand, is used by the LightSwitch application to connect to the database when it's running. OK, so let's go ahead and click on the browse. And now I'm just going to uh, enter in our the uh, database name. So remember in the properties area of the SQL Azure um, portal, you can see the database name. So I'm just going to grab that and then we'll just put it right in here. Okay, and then we're going to use SQL Server Authentication. And the password. OK, and the name of the database is order management, so that's fine. OK, so click OK. Next, we're going to need to create a database login for our user. OK, so I'm just going to uh, create LS user and just make sure the password is, is good. Okay, 
So this will create the user for us. Okay, and now we just click Next. Okay, so next we're going to need to create the application administrator because this will be the first login that we put, that LightSwitch will put into the table for us. Okay, so I'll just create me as the first user and password here. Okay, and then next. Okay, so next we are specify a certificate. This is basically um, if we want to sign the client application. We're not going to need to do that because we have a web application, but if we had a desktop application, we would want to sign the zap file. Okay, and then that you're it, and then we just click publish. And this will take a little bit to publish into Windows Azure. It usually takes between 10 and 15 minutes. You'll see the project here in LightSwitch um, publishing for a while. And when you're ready to go, you'll see the instance running in the portal. Okay, so once LightSwitch is done with its publishing part, it takes about a few minutes to set that up. Then it opens up the um, Windows Azure management portal for you, and you can see that your instance is initializing. Okay, once it's, once it's finished initializing, then you can go ahead and navigate to your application. Okay, here's a few, minutes, few more minutes later. Now we've got everything sitting in the ready state, so I'm just going to click on the deployment here we've got, and then if you look at the properties, here is the, uh, the way we access it from our browser. Okay, so like I mentioned, we're using a test certificate, so I'm just going to click continue. Okay, so then here's the login name, so. Okay, great. So here's our application running, and it's ready to go with uh, all the data that we now need to enter into the system. So it published our application with the initial administration user in here, so that now the admin user can go ahead and enter in users and roles. And once they do that, they can assign um, other users access to the app. Okay, so that's basically it. I'm not going to go ahead and fill in any more data here, but that's how you can publish your application to Windows Azure. So thanks for watching.